what percentage of my self-talk came from my people pleaser addiction. And if you go back through, and if I went back through, probably 90% of my self-talk came from this source of an addiction to people pleasing. Intentionally work on and grow your emotional and spiritual intelligence. Work on intentionally your spiritual and emotional intelligence. It's tough to walk by faith when you hate yourself. The external work won't work or stick if you don't do the internal work. influencers, and entrepreneurs. Super excited to join you today. I want to give you guys a quick view of this amazing, amazing scenery here right outside our window. We got Pikes Peak, the Rocky Mountains right there. How beautiful, inspiring is that? Okay, I'm going to share with you all. I've got six tips that took me from an incredible amount of of negative self-talk and self-condemnation. I mean, I'm talking like to the point of paralysis. My my self-condemnation and self-talk was uh, atrocious. And give me a hashtag self-talk if you can relate with me. And here's the reality. Everybody has self-talk. We all talk to ourselves. In fact, who talks to us the most? Who do we talk with the most? Ourselves. And... I'm just going to share some six points that have been game-changing for me in turning that around. And I, I can't tell you how, how paralyzing and controlling and consuming my self-talk was for, for many years. And this, these six tips are how I literally went from condemnation to, to courage in my self-talk. So let me tell you a little story time. We, a lot of you know, we recently started a podcast called EQ for Entrepreneurs, and it's for entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers. I would have started it three to five years earlier, literally, if it were not for my self-talk. This was some of my self-talk. I'm going to give you a little glimpse into my being, which is scary, of, of how, how and why we did not start our, self-talk, our, our podcast sooner. This is, this is, this is literally, these are the, the, some of the words that I was, some of the phrases that I was saying. No one is ever going to listen to it. N- you have nothing good to say. You have no value. You're not worth anything. What results do you really have in your life? You're not successful enough. You're not as holy as, you know, this guy or this lady. You're not as righteous as this guy or this lady. You're not as Christian as this guy or this lady. You're not as good as this guy, this lady, right? I've got, you know, my, my college classmates are, I've got so many college classmates that are geniuses, brilliant. So the whole comparison game, you're too fat. You're not smart enough. You don't know how to critically think. Don't you remember all the bad stuff you've done in your life? Do you know how many people can't stand you as it is? Do you realize the number of new haters that you're going to acquire? Your motives are bad and selfish. You're just looking for approval and validation and affirmation. You're not an actual expert. I don't have a PhD in in emotional intelligence. And then the grand finale, dude, what are you going to be talking about emotional intelligence for when you you, you have the emotional intelligence of a (laughs) five-year-old, Right? You you have a low EQ and you're wanting to do a podcast on emotional intelligence, like, you know what I mean? Like, dude, what? Ta- like, McFly. So, and that's just that's the nice stuff. That's the PG stuff. You know, I, I didn't want to bring everyone's day down here, so I, I kept you with just the PG stuff. So, and and I wonder, man, well, well man, it's shocking that I didn't start the podcast three to five years early when this was. This was my self-talk. And again, I'm just giving you the PG version. This was not like the, the, 
the real the real self talk. There were lots of colorful language. You know, how could you bleep, 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 possibly bleep, think, bleep that you would actually, you know, I mean, it was brutal stuff. And and so is it is it any surprise to think that, uh, you know, that I was going to do anything with my life? And, and this is not just going on for three to five years. This was going on for a decade, y'all. This was no joke, a decade plus of just beating myself up through this, through, through my self-talk. Well, here are five questions that that have helped. Now, this is this is free tacos here because I didn't even talk. These aren't part of the, even the six the six tips. So this is free tacos right here. This section. So the five questions that I ask: Number one, where is God's truth in all of that self condemnation? What part of all my eight hundred and seventy five negative script that I was running unconsciously? What part of that, what percentage of that was from God's truth? Zero. Whoop. Number two, what does God say about me? Right? I'm a Christian. Obviously, you can be whatever faith background you want to be. That's just my particular background. What does God say about me? Number two. Number three, who does God say that I am? Who does God say that I am? Number three. Number four. How much weight am I putting on what God says I am versus what man says I am or that I say I am? And truth be told, now again, this is from Mr. Bible Thumper, Christian, Holy Roller guy with lots of issues, okay? So I'm I'm using that facetiously. So here I am, this Bible-believing, Christian, whatever, Holy Roller guy, and I was listening... I was listening to my own words more than I was God's words. God, God's truth, like God, like, dude, shut up, McFly, right? <laughs> Let me tell you who, who you really are. And I'm like, no, God, you just don't understand how bad I really am. Literally, this, I'm telling you all, this is true skinny here. I would tell God, God, you really don't know. If you really knew how bad I was, like these verses, dude, don't apply to me because I am so jacked up. Like, how crazy is that? Like, me telling God that his son dying for me, like, that wasn't enough. Right? It's it's crazy, man, how nutso I I, I got. So, 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 boom. And then number five is, what percentage of the negative self-talk that I had for years and years and years, decade plus, is from my people-pleaser addiction? What percentage of my self-talk came from my people-pleaser addiction? And if you go back through, and if I went back through, man, I would say just from looking at it very quickly, I'm looking at my notes here, probably 90% of my self-talk came from this source of an addiction to people-pleasing. Now, the six tips. I haven't even gotten to my six tips yet. Number one. Boom. Give me a give me a number one if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on Facebook in the thread below. Number one. Okay, write down truth statements about this is one A. So write down your truth statements. Okay, is number one. One A is who does God say that you are? Now, a great place to start is a great book I read is called Victory Over Darkness. Victory over darkness. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, or you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, whatever, write down very quickly, Victory Over Darkness. And it's by Neil T. Anderson. In the middle of that book, literally, if you just, if you didn't even read the book, you just open the book up to the middle, it has four or five pages of truth statements about who God says that we are in him. Okay, so that's 1A. 1B, so write down true statements is number one. 1A is write down who God says you are. Number two, write down who you really are at your core, right? Not all the negative stuff, but here's, and here's three specific things to write about. So this is 1BI, okay? 1BI is your core values. Write down your core values. Do you even know what your actual core values are? 1B. Two I <laughs> is write down your strengths. What are your strengths? And three is 
to, uh, another way to ask it is, what have others edified you for since your childhood? So over the course of your life, of uh, so for the past 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, however old you are, what have been those things that people have said that you that, that are your strengths over the course of the past, again, 10, 15, 20 plus years of your life? What are those threads? So right, so those are, boom, that's number one. One, you know, that's one A and B with those sub points. Okay, number two tip. Number two, make the above a part of your daily habits. So make reviewing your truth statements a part of your daily habits. Stick it in, and what's the best way to create a new habit? Attach it with one that you already have. Most people eat breakfast, attach reviewing your daily habits, your truth statements with doing breakfast. Pull it out on your three by five card, on your notes, that kind of thing. Or maybe when you before you take a shower, or before you go to bed, or right when you wake up, right? Whatever that is, but attach it to a habit you already have. So number two, make the above a part of your daily habits. Number three, record a voice memo on your phone with your truth statements and put it in the present tense. So I am, boom, I am, boom. I am disciplined, I am organized, right? All these different things. There's power, there's psychology and all this stuff. There's science. So this is not cheesy, warm, fuzzy stuff. This is the real deal, holy field. So that's number three. Record a voice memo on your phone with your truth statements and play it as your own personal daily podcast. And again, that can be part of your daily habits there. Okay, that's number three. Number four, put your truth statements up on your refrigerator. Print it out. Put your true statements up on your refrigerator. Put it up on your on your bathroom mirror. Put it up on the front door of your house when you're walking out of the house. That's number four. Uh, uh, number five, put reminders on your phone to review your truths throughout the day. So it'll pop up as reminders throughout the day, random times, boom, your truths. And number six, intentionally work on. Okay, this is huge. I, I literally saved the grand finale for the last point. Maybe I should have put it up front. I didn't. It is what it is. The, this is literally the biggest point. Drum roll. Give me a drum roll. Boom. Drum roll in the chat log. The biggest, or find the drumstick emoji, something like that. The biggest, this is, I'm telling you, this is, and this is real stuff. This isn't stuff I read in a book. This is stuff that, that how, how, how I changed my self-talk from condemnation to courage and confidence. The number six is intentionally work on and grow your emotional and spiritual intelligence. Work on intentionally your spiritual and emotional intelligence. Now, for all my, my super duper faith people, now check this out. I was the faith guy with no EQ. And guess what limited me? My emotional intelligence. I'm just being honest with you. Now, maybe, maybe you walk on water and you fast 40 days a pop, you know, five, five times a year, and, and like you're living at your full potential. That was not my story. I had faith in God. I had all these Bible verses memorized. I went to church. Like I, I crossed the T's and died on my spiritual eyes, so to speak. But my EQ was the EQ, emotional intelligence of a three-year-old. And guess what? I lived at the level of my emotional intelligence. It's tough. This is huge. It's tough to walk by faith when you hate yourself. Oh, hey, come on, somebody. Somebody better write that down. That was huge. This, this literally sums up my life so far. It's tough to walk by faith when you hate yourself. And that's where I was at. I'm telling you that, and, and I'm still working through some of this stuff. So don't think I've arrived by any stretch. So what, what has made the greatest impact in my faith, in my ability to slowly begin to start living at my full potential is growing my emotional intelligence because it's tough to walk by faith and believe all of God's promises for my life when I hate myself. 
When, when I don't feel like I have value and all this stuff because of all these emotional junk in my trunk. And so, so that's the, the number six is intentionally work on and grow your emotional and spiritual intelligence. The, and realize this, y'all, this is another huge point. The external work won't work or stick if you don't do the internal work. The external work won't work or stick if you don't do the internal work. So you change, in my opinion, you change from the inside than the outside. Now, in this approach, you see these six tips, I'm hitting it from both sides. I'm hitting it from the outside and the inside, but I'm telling you, don't think that the outside is gonna work if you don't do the internal work. You have to take the time and intention to do the internal work. We absolutely love being part of this journey with you all. Please comment, share, rate, and review this video, this audio, if you're watching on the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Let's, let's, let's build better lives through connection, community, and crisis.